For my kitchen vlog this time, I'm going to unbox and assemble a 22 inch Weber Master Touch grill. This should be fun. I saw some other videos, they skipped over a lot of the details. There was one guy who did a really good detailed assembly and I'm going to sort of follow his pattern. So let's unbox and assemble this Weber grill. The tools they recommend are a Phillips screwdriver, a little block of wood just to back something up when you're going to do some hammering and a hammer. I'm going to use a rubber mallet. I think it'll do less damage. You can also use a 7 16ths socket wrench. They include a wrench inside a plastic wrench, which I think is a better idea. We'll talk about that when I get to it. And you might want to add to your list a little tray for small parts so things don't get lost. All right, let's open this up and see what I've got inside. board on top and instruction manual items you can order for additional gourmet cooking and then the assembly guide I'm going to be following this inside of this box here are the two units that hold charcoal. These are the charcoal trays that will go inside the rubber. Put those aside. And here is the lid. I'll be getting to this later. It has the vent control on it. Another box inside. This is the ash collector pan, and it's got small parts in here. These are the hubcaps for the wheels. This bracket here goes to the lid holder. When I get ready to assemble that, this green bag is the thermometer. The handle. So there are two handles. One is the handle for the lid, one is the handle for the front of the grill, and inside of this plastic bag is the plastic wrench that I'll be using. A little bag of small parts. These are the pieces that go on the grill holder. Wheel caps, brackets, lots of uh, washers, nuts, bolt. That's going to go in my little parts tray. And this is the ash catcher. This is the bottom bowl. This is where the handle will go. This down here. Now it's got a piece of cardboard on there for protection. Take that off. And that little lever opens and closes the vents in the bottom. We'll talk about that later. And it's also a sweeper to help sweep the ashes out into that ash catcher. I'll set this aside. Digging further in, this is the warming rack that goes inside of the grill. Uh, the wheels three legs these are the two rear legs this would be the front leg This is the tripod that supports the grill. And then finally, two last, three last pieces. This is the cooking grill. It's got these lifting sides, so you can add more charcoal to your grill. It's got these zip ties holding the centerpiece in there. We'll talk about that in a minute. You'll probably need a pair of scissors or wire cutters to snip these off. 
This is the lid holder that attaches to the back of the grill so you can lift your lid off and rest it in here. And then this last piece is the grill that your charcoal rests on. In my case, I'm going to be using oak firewood. That's it. I'm going to follow these instructions fairly closely with a few notes along the way. The first step involves these clips that go inside of these three leg areas here. These sockets. You put these in. with the long end going down and the button should come out the hole in the side of the socket. The third one, and by the way, mentioning the third one, you'll want to orient this so you keep in mind where the front of the grill is because these things are evenly spaced. So you could get the legs on the wrong way. Someone mentioned they saw a display model in the store where that was done. It was in the wrong way. Some people like to put these clips in the legs first. The problem is what happens if you fumble and you get it down inside? You can't push it out because it's closed at the other end. You're going to have to use a coat hanger wire and fashion a hook to pull it out. The exception is the front leg, which is open at both ends. If you fumble it down there, you can always push it out with a long dowel. So I'm going to leave one out and use that inside the leg just to test it. Okay, that's step one. I have two of the three in. I'm going to do this one later. Next step should be, it is, it's the ash pan holder. And you want to orient this so that these prongs here, they're bent in slightly, are going to line up with your legs. And then there's a slot here that is where this handle goes through. You don't want to get it on upside down. I don't think you can get it on upside down because of the way this is spaced. So feed that in there and then line this up. to get all three of those in there. And you kind of just have to gently persuade it to go down until it locks in place. It's a bit of a tight fit. There it goes. That's it. And while we're here, I can put the ash pan on. There's two hooks here. It fits into there. It has a peg on either side that are part of this, this um, handle here. And then it clips in front. I'll show you a close-up of that. Just to show you a close-up of this notch, the ash pan attaches to two grooves on either side and then by squeezing this together it locks into that groove there. Whether you put it on now or later, I don't know, really matters. I'm going to take it off just to get it out of my way as I work with the legs next. Next, I want to assemble the bottom triangle. This triangle has the axle on which the two legs, the two wheels will attach. And then the front leg will attach over there. The legs have these flattened portions. You want to make sure you orient them the right way. So you don't want to put them on this way. You want to make sure the angle is such that the leg kind of follows the angle of the triangle. Like so. We'll do with this one later on. Here are the two wheels. You can set those on. At least one of them. And this is where you use that piece of wood. I'm going to use a piece of my firewood. And I'm going to use my rubber mallet. These are the end caps that hold the wheels on. They give you three of these. So you have an opportunity to mess up once. So you position this with one end of your axle. 
on a piece of wood, put a friction end cap on there, then using a hammer, I'm going to use a rubber mallet, you want to hammer that down in place. I'll do a close-up for you. It's this little end cap here. You need to wrap on to make sure that's nice and tight. And then you might as well put the hub cap on. So line up the pegs. These pegs with the holes in the side of the wheel. And just press on. Make sure it's on all the way wheel is done and by the way when you put these wheels on make sure you orient them the right way the part that has these the side that has these spoke like things on there that's the inside that goes toward the axle the outside which is smoother and has the holes for the hubcap that goes to the outside and again make sure your legs are on there angled the right way put your friction cap on there and then set it up on a wooden block and hammer it in place. Next I'm ready to start putting the legs on the bottom bowl. A couple of considerations. One is make sure your handle is facing in the right direction so that you get your legs on the correct way. Also on this bottom triangle there's a hook here. That hook is going to connect to the third leg when we get to it. You want to make sure the hook in this orientation is facing upward. Okay, so with my lower bowl oriented the right way, that hook oriented the right way, I want to work on inserting these legs. And it's got that little clip in there. You want to work gently and just push this down inside and let it slide in until the button comes back out. It'll come back out through this hole once it's all the way inside. So I'm doing a close up here to show you there's that button that's sticking out. That's from that clip that was in there, that is in there. So that leg is in, do the other side the same way. Now let's do the third leg. Third leg's got two holes in it. One is close to the end, that's the hole the end that goes down into the socket. The one with the further hole that attaches to the hook. This is a good time, I think, to put the clip in there to test how well this is going to go in. And then you want to attach the hook to the leg so that it rocks on there and then you can fit your leg down inside. Again, it's tight. You don't want to twist back and forth. You don't want to hammer it in or bend back and forth, but you can give it a little bit of a twist to ease it down inside. Push that button in. You can hear it snap, and that's when the button goes in. Then the last step is to put the plastic cap on there. That's it. Our legs are assembled. We're done with the legs. Let's do the lid holder next. That's this bracket here that's going to fit on the outside. Before you attach it, there's a support thing here that gets routed on there. And that's the wrong way, so let's do it the other way. Okay. And for now, just kind of move it to the center let it hang down and then before attaching this piece you want to get it assembled this roll here there's two of them goes on each side there's a wide flange and a narrow flange the wide flange goes toward the outside and then you want to put a washer on there feed this through the hole attach another washer and then wind one of these nuts on there and these are friction nuts so the outside is cut I'm just going to put that on just thumb tight right now assemble the other side a large flange to the outside 
washer in the hole washer and then another friction nut and then just thumb tighten it right now I'm going to turn this around because we're going to work with this bracket next to attach this bracket here there's a second bracket it's got a folded over edge here that goes down to the bottom side and then there's a carriage bolt a carriage bolt has a square shoulder at the top of the threads under the head of the bolt and that lines up with a square hole in the bracket and in the second piece and then you place those inside there line it up right and then inside you attach a washer and again the nut so there's the carriage bolt and the washer on there here's the nut I'm gonna thread that on there all right I got that nut started on there this is the wrench that they give you to tighten these up and that is a tight fit <sighs> yeah and I think that is where I'm gonna need socket wrench I finally got this one on and I gotta tell you that was really tight fitting and tough to twist on. I'm hoping these side ones will go on better with this. Yes, look at that. This should spin. Lock this side down. That's tight and this spins. So that was the only problem one right there and that was a real problem and look the only part I have left over is that extra axle nut I'm ready to finish the easy part of my assembly I'm ready to put this ash pan in place again there's hooks these little pegs fit inside those hooks on either side like so and then that snaps into place right there by squeezing the handle. I want to attach this front handle. There are two pieces plus the screw, the inner piece. You kind of angle it in there and then push it forward till it snaps in place. This is the handle, the outside part of it. You can put it on upside down if you want, but by putting it on the right way with Weber up the right way, you have these hooks on the end where you can attach cooking utensils. Put that on, put the screw in there, and then with a Phillips screwdriver, you just want to tighten that down until it starts to feel snug. It's plastic, you don't want to tighten it too much, you'll strip the, the um, plastic off inside. That should be good enough. With my lid placed in that lid holder it makes it easier now to work on the lid to attach the components to the lid this is the handle you can attach it either way with it the Weber reading to the back or Weber reading to the front it's not going to matter at all as far as how it uses how it works since I'm going to be working a lot with my temperature gauge I'm figuring I probably want it to face the Weber to face to the front so you just push this through the two holes there are a couple of friction nuts that come with it I can't really show you how to put those on unless I take you inside but you just kind of thumb screw those on and then with that wrench they give you that plastic wrench you can tighten those into place don't overdo it because these are thin metal and they might break Okay, last thing to put on the lid is the temperature gauge. The temperature gauge consists of three parts. There's a back plate, the gauge itself, and then a wing nut. You want to assemble the temperature gauge in there. There's a peg 
on the back of the gauge and that fits into a slot on the back plate. You can see it come through. That'll line it up right. And then there's a notch and a hole on the lid. There's a peg on the inside of the back plate that fits through that notch. And then you just put your wing nut on, spin it into place, and then just tighten it with your fingers. Lined up right. And that's how it should look. Finally, there are the pieces that go inside. This is the charcoal grate. There are a pair of charcoal holders. Put your hot charcoal in there. You can either put them in the center for direct heat. You can move them to the sides for indirect heat. This is the grill that goes on top. Cooking surface. This center grate is held on with some wire ties. You can snip these off. They're just for packing. And then this comes out to put other attachments in. For example, there's a um, searing grill you can put on there. I'm curious about one thing though. How well will my cast iron skillet fit in there? Oh, look at that. I could cook on my cast iron skillet in my grill. That's cool. There are attachments that I want to get though. There are some pretty good ones. But for the time being, I will put this back in place. And I think I mentioned this earlier. If you need to add more charcoal to your grill, you can lift these side pieces up to replenish your charcoal when you need to, to keep your fire going. And then one more piece, and that's this here. That just fits in there any old which way. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't lock in, doesn't latch in anywhere. That's a warming grate if you want to put some food that's already cooked but you want to keep it warm up top. Maybe you're working on some corn, you've got some steaks cooking here and you've got corn on the cob. You can put it up here when it's cooked and just keep it warm until your steak is ready. And that's it. That's all the assembly. Put the lid back on. Maybe not with the warming grill on. Yeah, there we go. One thing that might be worth mentioning is that bottom triangle is a great place to store your stuff, your gear, when you put your grill away at the end of the season. Keep everything together. I'm using an old um, bicycle basket. I have my chimney in there, my butane torch. Inside the chimney I have my starter briquettes. Nice easy place to store it. What about buying a cover to protect this for the winter? Well, let me show you my cover. This is my cover. And there it is, that's put away. So, what are my afterthoughts after having assembled that Weber grill? As far as the, the grill itself, I think it's a nice product. I like the materials. I like the, the, the metal that's being used, especially the grill, the, the grill surface on which you'll, you're going to grill your food. That's a heavy piece of, of work. That's just really good quality. I like the way the, the overall material that's used in most of the parts. Um, I think that grill will give me years of good service. And from what I've heard from others who own Weber grills, the parts for it, if you need to order replacement parts are really easy to get. What are the downsides? Well, there are a few. I found three areas, maybe four. One is 
the assembly guide <laughs> that they give you. It's all pictures. There's no instructions, really. You're supposed to look at the pictures and figure out how parts go together. Now, I have a good mechanical aptitude. I used to repair typewriters. I know how to use tools. I know which end of a screwdriver to apply to a screw. I know what I'm doing when it comes to using tools. If you're all thumbs, if you're not good at assembling things, don't even attempt it. Don't try. It's not worth the frustration you'll go through and you might damage parts in the process because this is not, this is not an easy assembly. It's not as simple as insert tab A in slot B. It's not that simple. Find someone who maybe repairs appliances or air conditioners, works on cars or motorcycles. Someone who knows what to do with the toolbox and ask them to assemble it for you. Even pay them. Or maybe invite them over for, for ribs the first time, or tri-tip the first time you use your grill. Thank them that way. Be a nice, pleasant way. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, as far as the assembly, eh, I'd give it a 6. If I were feeling more generous, <laughs> maybe a 7. There were three particular areas besides the manual that I had trouble with. One was I didn't like the way that the legs fit into the bottom part of the grill, the grill bowl, the bottom of it, the sockets. I could not get those things to go in right. And I didn't show it in the video, but I struggled. I struggled a lot. And I finally greased the inside of those sockets. And I was very careful the way I placed that little clip thing with the button on it because it, it wouldn't line up right. It would, it would move when I was trying to insert the leg. And I was being really careful. You're not supposed to rock it back and forth or hammer it in, but you can kind of just jiggle it a little bit, kind of just twist it down in. I found with grease I could get those legs in. But that was a bear. Weber, reads, Weber needs to rethink that whole assembly part, how the legs attach. Find an easier, better way. There's got to be a better way. So that was number one. Number two, the way the wheels attach. Those friction nuts that you hammer onto the end of the axle to hold the wheels on. Why? It doesn't make any sense. You look at that half round bale, that wire that goes along the back. What was it called? I saw what it was in the book. It's um, piece number 18, tuck away lid holder and lower support assembly. That metal bale is threaded on the end so you can fit it into the bottom of the grill you can put the friction nuts on works very well why not do the same thing with the wheels just thread the ends of the access the axle and then thread nuts on to fasten the wheels in place it would be so much easier than trying to hammer on those those friction nuts and if you make a mistake you can twist the, 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 the nut off, fix your mistake, and twist the nut back on again. You don't need to include an extra hammer-on cap to, to cover mistakes if people make mistakes. And they will. They'll make mistakes when they're assembling. The videos that I saw, they talked about the mistakes that they made and that they saw others make. The third thing that I disliked was on that um, tuck-away lid holder, there's a bracket on the bottom that attaches, it's like a brace that attaches to the bottom part of the grill and there's a carriage bolt that goes through. I could not get that nut to thread onto that carriage bolt. I had to take everything apart and then using some lock nut um, pliers and a, and a wrench, twist that nut on to try to clean the threads or whatever was going wrong because it wouldn't go on. And forget the plastic um, wrench that they give you. That wouldn't be strong enough to thread that on. I had to work hard to get that, that nut on. And once I got it cleaned up, then it was easy to assemble. Those were the three areas. Otherwise, I think it was pretty um, easy to assemble. The, the parts were fairly logical. Again, if you have a mechanical aptitude and you can look at illustrations and figure out how pieces go together, you could do it. You could do it. It's not, it's, not, it's not like you have to do a lot of welding or soldering or things like that. It, it's just simply assembling the pieces. But I think Weber could make it a lot easier.
there has to be better ways, such as threading the ends of the axle. That would be an easier, and how, how much more expensive would that be? It wouldn't make the cost of the final product exorbitant uh, that people wouldn't buy it. So there has to be better ways, and I think Weber could do a better job when they come out with a newer model. Um, hopefully they'll fix those problems, but otherwise, I think it's a great product. I love the way it looks. I like the materials that it's made with. It just seems like it's it's well made, and that it's going to last me with proper care. Like I don't, I'm not going to put it under a cover and store it outside. I showed at the end of the video. I'm going to store mine in my shed. I think with proper maintenance, proper care, put it, put it away when I'm done using it, keep it clean. I think it'll last me for the remainder of my life anyways, and maybe uh, someone who inherits it after me. So great product. Uh, overall, I would probably give it an 8 to a 9 as far as the product itself, 8 to a 9 out of 10. It's just the assembly that I would give 6, maybe a 7 out of 10, because the assembly is just, it's too, some of the steps are just too difficult. They're not, they're not well thought out as far as a, how the pieces go together. So there's my um, assembly and somewhat of a review, at least on the assembly of the Weber. Um, I think it's a great product and I think it's worth the price I paid for. I paid about $200 for it at Home Depot and I, I think it was worth it. So that's my kitchen vlog for today. Hopefully you like what you're seeing and hearing. If so, if you haven't, just haven't subscribed already, please do so. Forward the link to others get others uh, watching it involved and thanks for watching.